Hey everybody, I'm Sandy Scheinbaum and I want to welcome you to Positive Psychology at the Movies. I've loved movies ever since I was a little girl and I have also loved teaching all about character strengths by talking about movies. Welcome. In this talk, you will learn about positive psychology and how to discover your character strengths by watching movies. So positive psychology, what is that? Well, in psychology, traditionally, the focus was on what's wrong with you. But positive psychology is the scientific study of what's right with you. So they actually did a lot of research into what constitutes flourishing, a life well lived, and came up with five elements of well-being. And for short, we call it PERMA. So what are those? Well, first, the P, that's positive emotions. You certainly want to have a life filled with positive feelings. And you may get there by becoming very engaged. That's the E, engagement or flow. And R is for relationships. It's very important to have meaningful relationships. And the M is for meaning, a sense of purpose. And finally, the A is achievement, no matter how small that might be. And recently, we've expanded the concept of PERMA to add a V, so it's PERMA-V for vitality. So in order to be able to have the, this life well lived, we want the health, the vitality, the energy to do so. So how would we find PERMA? It's through our character strengths. That's what we're going to focus on. Some of these strengths are of the heart and others are of the mind. I like to see them like a deck of cards and you are dealt all of them. You have a complete set of these traits. And some may stand out as your signature strengths. So what are those? These are really core to who you are. And you have them throughout your life. When you were a child, as you get older, they don't disappear. It's you at your best. How would you find out what my character strengths are? You might be asking yourself that. So you can go to the VIA Institute on Character. That's viacharacter.org. And you can take a survey. And this is a very well-validated test. It doesn't take that long to complete, 15, 20 minutes. And you will then get a ranking of your strengths. Now, again, you have all 24 of these, but some are going to naturally cluster at the top. And those are your signature strengths. The cool thing about the VIA Institute on Characters assessment is that they have versions for kids. So I would really recommend giving that to kids and then start to have strengths discussions. Speaking of strengths discussions, that is what we're focusing on, strengths spotting. So if you are watching a movie, you're watching a TV series, you're reading a book, a novel, and notice what strengths are going to be on display. So the strengths are divided into what we call virtues. And the first virtue is wisdom. So what strengths are associated with wisdom? Creativity, curiosity, love of learning, perspective, and judgment. As we go through and talk about each of these strengths, I'd like you to think, hmm, is that me? Is that something like that just defines me? And chances are, if it really, really resonates with you, then that's going to be one of your top five or ten strengths. So let's start with creativity. It really refers to producing something original, but it doesn't have to be like, oh, original painting, an original song. Uh, it can be what we call the little C, just everyday solutions to a problem that are creative. 
So an example, and I'm going to share some movies that I think stand out as displaying this trait, uh, would be Home Alone. And again, as we go through this, think of which ones you would put on this list, because I'm just going to share one or two. But what would you add as a really great display of, of creativity in one of the characters in this movie that you love? Curiosity is the next one. This is an interest in everything around you. I thought Forrest Gump displayed that really well. So in order to learn, where do you begin? You begin with curiosity. And having that interest in everything around you is really a, one of the markers for good health, physical health, as well as mental, emotional health. Uh, so we often see people who are, as they age, they don't lose that curiosity. And that's very, very important to keep that. So love of learning. I was very excited. I was in a bookstore and happened to see so many books that were on the shelf that were written by people that I'm fortunate to call my friends and colleagues. So love of learning is a special case of curiosity. It's where you just become entranced in the experience of learning. A movie that I thought showed that really well was Beauty and the Beast. Perspective is next. This is wisdom personified. It's being able to see the big picture to zoom out. I thought there were some characters in Star Wars that had a good perspective. And again, which ones would you choose to add to the list that show perspective? Judgment. This is being able to reason, to think rationally and logically, not be ruled by your emotions and just jump to conclusions very quickly. So you weigh both sides. And Lord of the Rings is a good example of character that shows a lot of judgment. So the next virtue or cluster of strengths is around courage. So Bravery, honesty, perseverance, and zest. Let's go through each one. Bravery. It's doing what needs to be done despite fear. So we may think of it as physical bravery, but it can be moral bravery or psychological bravery as well. The Wizard of Oz is a great example of bravery. So honesty. This next, that is really integrity. It's being responsible for your feelings and actions. And it's tough sometimes to be really honest, honest with yourself as well as others, which is why it's in here in this courage cluster. I thought Tootsie is a good example. And very often in movies, very popular theme is a journey. So the main character may not start out displaying this particular strength. And at the end of the film, they are able to experience and express that strength. Uh, we also see lots of examples in movies as well as in TV shows of a strength that can be used too much of it, can get out of hand. So too much honesty might not be a good thing, for example. All right, with any of these strengths, so they can be overused, they can be underused. Too much curiosity and you would be called a busybody. Perseverance is next. What does that mean? Keeping on despite obstacles. Finishing what you started, no matter how difficult that might be. It's often referred to as grit or hardiness. Rocky is a great example. Finding Nemo, and by the way, animated features are often great examples of showing these character strengths. And there are so many more. It was really hard to choose in this category. Lots and lots of great examples of perseverance. And we cheer on those uh, lead characters uh, as they don't give up. 
The next one is zest. Zest is energy, enthusiasm, excitement. It's just embracing all of life, living with vitality, vigor, excitement. Uh, we often see this on, on display in musicals. I'm a huge fan of musicals. I remember when I was a little girl loving musicals, Singing in the Rain was one of them. And if you're a musical fan, I'm sure that you can come up with many more that show this strength of zest. And zest is one of my top strengths. The next cluster or virtue is what we call the humanity strengths. So this is connection to others particularly. So we've got love and kindness and social intelligence. So love. That happens to be my daughter on her wedding day. Uh, so we think of love as romantic love. It's the capacity to love and be loved. But it's not necessarily just romantic love. It's love between, in a family, it can be uh, love uh, between friends. And so many ways we can express love, accept love, self-love often is very hard for people to do. So there are many, many wonderful movies out there about love. And we all, or most of us, would love a good love story. So uh, When Harry Met Sally is one that stands out for me. And often, again, it's a gradual progression. Uh, the main characters may not start out in love, but we follow their story and we see them finding love. Kindness, that is altruistic or compassionate love. And it's a true awareness of the needs of others. We often refer to it as empathy. It's where you give and you're not expecting anything else in return. Uh, this is a movie that shows this kindness, um, a gradual emerging friendship. Uh, I want to warn you, if you are going to be watching with children, this one would not be appropriate for kids. It came out in 1969, uh, and uh, I thought it was a really great representation of kindness, of giving. Social intelligence. That refers to accurately processing, sensing feelings and cues in others and in yourself as well. It's having insight into motivations. Mean Girls, I think, shows that um, particularly well. Uh, and now we move on to justice. What constitutes the strengths in this grouping, this virtue? It's teamwork and leadership and fairness. So teamwork. That is working well with others, contributing to a group, working for the good of the group rather than your own personal gain. Toy Story is one that stood out for me as an example of teamwork, but there are so many, uh, many of the films that portray uh, sports and um, showing a team coming together. Uh, and, and again, often they're not together in the beginning, but by the end of the movie, they've all gotten together and formed a team. Uh, so these are often very, very inspiring films because we see this team coming together and everybody supporting one another. Leadership. So many uh, good movies about leadership. This is inspiring others to behave in a certain way. It's perhaps organizing, facilitating group activities. The Darkest Hour is a great portrayal of leadership. And remember the Titans. Um, and many sports uh, movies are showing leadership. Often it's the coach. Uh, many of the films that are based on true stories are filmed because they want to show this great leader. Fairness is next. That's having a sense of what's morally right and wrong. It's being concerned for social justice, make sure, making sure everybody is treated fairly. 
and a perfect example. I remember seeing that as a little, as when I was um, actually um, a teenager and, of course, reading the, the book. Um, but To Kill a Mockingbird is just a, a wonderful example of fairness. Temperance is the next virtue. So what are the strengths with temperance? They're forgiveness, humility, prudence, and self-regulation. So forgiveness. This is accepting the shortcomings of others. In other words, you're going to give them a second chance and not hold on. This strength has been very strongly tied to physical as well as emotional well-being. It's letting go of anger, resentment, uh, not being able to let that go. Uh, and there's a couple examples, one in Les Mis, a very powerful example of power of forgiveness, which turns somebody's life around. And Lady Bird is another example. There are different um, ways that she forgave uh, different people in her life. And I thought that was a really powerful story that showed that. Humility. Humility is, it's not being full of yourself. It's accurately appraising your abilities, recognizing your limitations. And you're keeping your accomplishments in perspective. And this is a highly admired trait. We don't um, respond well, typically, to people who underuse humility. Overusing can be a problem as well. You're a pushover, for example. Harry Potter, I thought, was a good representation of humility. Prudence. Prudence is called the mother of all virtues. It's like your mother saying, oh, you better take your sweater. It's using reason rather than emotions to guide behavior. And what you're doing is weighing the risks against the benefits. So you want to have a balance where you're not using so much prudence that you're terrified of everything. And on the other hand, acting in a way that's very careless, lack of caution. A good example of that was driving Miss Daisy. Self-regulation. That has to do with self-control. Delaying gratification. It's modifying behavior to achieve goals. So I might add that uh, these strengths that are under uh, this temperance virtue are a little harder to find in movies. There are tons of movies about love, for example, or perseverance. Um, and so finding one for self-regulation, uh, it might be more difficult. I'd love to hear what you come up with. I found Center Stage. That was a movie about the world of dance and uh, showed self-regulation and sometimes too much self-regulation, which could lead to an eating disorder, for example or uh, having your life so out of balance that um, you are working all the time, or in, in this case, practicing all the time, going to class, and you have very little balance. So it is all about finding balance of these strengths. Finally, the last cluster or virtue is what we call transcendence. The first one is appreciation of beauty and excellence, gratitude, hope, humor, and spirituality. Appreciation of beauty and excellence. It's a sense of awe and wonder, amazement, where you just appreciate all of the goodness that's around you. It can be appreciation of physical beauty, like a beautiful sunset, a skill that someone has and you admire, talent, work of art. It can be moral um, uh, beauty, the, a moral goodness that you notice. So this is one of my top strengths, and you might find I'm always saying, oh, I love that. I just have a deep appreciation for what's around me. An uh, example of that is in The Little Mermaid. 
as um, she so badly wants to be part of that world and is so in awe of everything around her. Gratitude. So we know a lot about gratitude and its connection to flourishing and good health. It's where you really aware and appreciate the goodness of life. So it's, it's, you need the appreciation of beauty and excellence, yes, but this is really um, a deeper sense of where you're thankful for it all. Groundhog Day is a great example of the main character's journey towards finding gratitude, experiencing that. Hope. Hope is a positive outlook toward the future. It's optimism. It's very strongly correlated with physical well-being as well as emotional health. And, of course, Annie and classic song, The Sun Will Come Out Tomorrow. And The Diary of Anne Frank, which was a movie in 1959, um, the, uh, her expression of hope and not giving up hope. Humor. So why is humor up here in this cluster with hope and gratitude? Uh, well, humor is a really important strength. This happens to be one of my favorite humorists. Uh, his name is J.P. Sears, and I love his humor because he pokes fun at so much of what I believe in, you know, gluten-free, dairy-free. Uh, he is, um, uh, always makes me laugh. And it's being able to see the light side of adversity. You can make others laugh or smile or you appreciate um, the humor and um, often the incongruity of life situations. I remember fondly the National Lampoon Vacation movie, particularly the first one. It's a great example of humor on display, but also Life is Beautiful, which showed that in a Nazi concentration camp, it's a beautiful story of a father's creativity in making his son laugh and creating humor. The last one, finally, we get to spirituality. This is referring to a higher purpose, having a sense of your meaning, your purpose, your place in the world, the meaning of the universe. It's often religious, but it doesn't have to be. It can be spiritual. And, of course, it's a wonderful life. There's a reason why this is way up there on the top favorites list, and people watch it every holiday um, season. And it's because it's a really great story that shows, again, it's somebody's journey to finding spirituality, finding um, the, that strength, as well as so many others. Because I might point out that these strengths do not are not on display and in movies or within you. They come in clusters. And so they, they travel together. You express them all. So how many character strengths could you identify in a movie that you really liked? So think of a movie, maybe it's one you saw recently, maybe it's one you want to watch again, and watch it again for a particular purpose. See if you can find a lot of strengths. And as you do, write them down. So I did this with Little Women. I saw the 2019 release, and guess what? I found every single one of these 24 strengths on display in that movie, in one character or another. And I realized that that was probably why I love that movie so much. And so movies are called positive psychology movies if they stir you, if they move you, they resonate with you, and they're able to evoke positive feelings within you, or you're so engaged that um, you lose track of time as you're watching. And you, you cheer on the character as they find meaning in their life or as they uh, master something and achieve something, achieve greatness. So what I'd like you to consider is ways that you can embrace particularly your signature strengths, but remember that you own all of them 
and you can practice. It's like building up a muscle because some maybe you don't use this frequently. They don't come as naturally to you as your signature strengths. So you can pick one a day and say, which ones am I going to use today? And you can strength spot in others. Find what's right with them, not what's wrong with them. And if you have kids, this is great to do with your kids to have strengths talk every day. And if you like watching movies, ask, talk about movies. Ask your friends, your family, or if you're a coach and you work with clients, you can teach them what their character strengths are or to spot them in others in their lives by talking about movies. So watching something new and finding character strengths would be a great activity. So rather than just passively watching, watch in a way that's dynamic. How many strengths can you find? And if the experience of watching the movie is something that is not positive for you, is it because maybe it was not a positive psychology movie that you did not see a lot of these character strengths on display? I also might add that you can pick a movie or a TV show that has a villain, and what you can discover is that they're still using those character strengths, but they're using it in a way that we would say is antisocial, not pro-social. So you might see uh, somebody who is committing a criminal act, but they're really good at social intelligence, um, for example. So that might be another exercise that might be fun to do. And perhaps, because I did mention some movies that are older, black and white, uh, you might be interested in checking out the American Film Institute, and here's their website, and discover what they had considered the 100 best movies of all time. Most of these are older movies, and they have a checklist, and you can say, hmm, how many of these have I seen? And if you're home and your kids are home and you want to have a night at the movies, um, perhaps rather than going to the most recent movies that were made, go back in time and see what are some of the classic movies or perhaps some of the ones that you loved when you were little and watch those. I did that so many times when my daughters were little. We had our uh, night at the movies, and uh, for us it was musicals typically or classic comedies, and they loved seeing those movies, even some of those that were black and white. So uh, to inspire you um, there further, there might be um, opportunities for you to find these movies uh, and uh, access them. These are ones that I think are very, very inspiring because they just show all of these. Um, they show wisdom. They show courage. They show um, all of these strengths. So the pursuit of happiness is a wonderful story of personal perseverance and many other strengths. Mr. Smith goes to Washington as a classic field of dreams, stand by me, Little Miss Sunshine, and one that I really liked, the prize winner of Defiance, Ohio, that is about uh, creativity as well as that perseverance strength as well, and so many other strengths. So uh, if you want to go further in this area, here's some books about positive psychology and about character strengths you might want to check out. And thank you so much for listening. And I hope that you will have fun watching movies in a whole different way. And more importantly, knowing your own strengths and focusing on what's right with you and not what's wrong. Bye now.